And that real science requires both aspects, uh, both aspects of learning. I mean, besides the fact that our brain is at least 40% neurons. Uh, that's kind of fun to know. So where does this go? When we talked about healing type 1 diabetes, um, in my book, I talk about 21% of the type 1 diabetics healing in three weeks, and 31% having a, uh, a blood sugar uh, that's normal, I mean, relatively normal, less than 120. How did that happen? When we know, we've been told by the scientists, it's incurable. It's a slow downhill thing. How do we reverse that? So part of it is an attitude that we've been talking about, but it's really beginning to understand how the system really works. Now, one of the things that's important, and that's why a little bit slow-acting things are better, uh, food, is that a blood sugar of 110, we begin to destroy the beta cells of the pancreas. At 100, they, they can be somewhat neutralized, but 110, now just think about that for a moment. So Steve's earlier question, well, what do we do with some of these slower acting things versus faster acting? And I think it's important, slower acting. Best, the sprouts, okay? I, I personally, that's my main, I have one meal a day, that's my main thing, is a lot of sprouts, because there's a lot of energy. And we've looked at it, we looked at it with Karelian photography, we've done um, different ways of examining it, and it's clear that sprouted foods by far has the most energy. So now we say, well, food isn't just about sugar car and, and carbohydrates and protein, but it's about energy. So another way of understanding is when we go to a more sproutarian diet, we are going to get more energy and we're going to get more healing for energy. That's really the main point I, I want to make with this. Um, we haven't quite gone into the Alzheimer's, uh, but I, um, but I, I want to say that within a three-week process, I track people's memory and brain function subjectively, but by and large, people often start, if they've had type 2 diabetes for, for a few years or 10 years, they start at maybe a 2 out of 10, 10 being best. And by the time we're done with three weeks, they usually reach about 9 in terms of memory, cognition, clarity of mind. That's a big deal. Somehow it's not really really written that much in the literature, but getting your brain back is a pretty good thing. Getting your heart back is a pretty good thing, right? <laughs> so we, we have a thing um, called type 3 diabetes, which is really Alzheimer's related to a higher sugar, and what happens is that the brain becomes insulin resistant. So um, and I'll just define the two terms so we're on the same place. We have insulin resistance and leptin resistance. And we haven't talked about obesity yet, but they're connected. So insulin resistance means the system, um, insulin is not working in the system to bring glucose into it. That's what it means. And so you have to keep pushing their insulin higher and higher. And we use different ratings, you know, uh, maybe the ratings I use is uh, insulin um, since of, from 2 to 10. Above 10, I consider insulin resistance. Other people say 20, but for my accuracy, that's what I use. So we're, we're talking now about sprouts as a primary food, I, you know, and the nuts and seeds, uh, answering that question, and leafy greens are your big players um, in the picture. And I mentioned it's going to be six months after you're healed, that we can consider blueberries, bilberries, and, and so forth. Um, that's what I call phase one. Now, I will be talking about some of that tomorrow, but just get the idea that we get uh, food is energy as well as, you know, carbohydrates and proteins. That's important to understand. Another thing I want to clarify is when we talk about saturated fats, one of the actual treatments for Alzheimer's, uh, type 3 diabetes, um, basically, because it's an insulin resistance, it can't use uh, uh, insulin or sugar, 
to feed the brain. So we use ketones. And I've seen people taking three, one to three tablespoons of coconut oil a day and their brain comes back. Why? Well, because the ketones, now we're calling them uh, mid-chain fatty acids, but it's uh, beta uh, ketoglutaric acids one, that actually feeds better, 25% more efficient for brain function and heart function. So we actually help people move in a certain way with, I'm gonna say, uh, feeding their brain cells with these uh, neurogenic active ketones. So that's one of the things. And then eventually people come out of insulin resistance because we move them more into a, a ketone metabolism. That also happens while we do the fasting because after one week, most everybody really, after two days, we've used up all the carbohydrate storage in the system and we start moving into fat metabolism which is producing the ketones. So there's a few things that go on in the overall treatment. So fasting, for me, is a fundamental thing to get us out of insulin resistance and leptin resistance and basically go to ketone metabolism. And so I do use a little bit of fat. I'm not a person who does that well with fat, but um, <clears throat> I'll take a tablespoon of the mid-chain fatty acids but if I'm treating somebody who's really got Alzheimer's, I'm, I want to give them at least uh, three tablespoons a day. And that, that's kind of in the literature, too. wasn't my idea. Uh, so just different ways of thinking about it. We have to shift the metabolism. That's what, why I always have fasting as part of my diabetes program for a week. You know, I'm not talking about type 1 diabetics. It's a little tricky, but for type 2, we do it all the time and slowly take them off insulin. So that's all part of the story. How do we move you into ketone metabolism and get your brain back?